What is happening? Welcome to another pitcher video breakdown. I've got a special one for you today because we have Matthew Libertor go. This guy right up here. And we're going to watch all of it. We're going to watch all of his 2023 uh, MLB debut. I'm excited for it. Uh, and I'm going to tell you right away, it's four seamers around the zone with a really nice curveball. And not a whole lot else. There are some extra things that I hope develop over time. But it was a very good one against the Brewers, and I'm going to break it down for you right now. Okay. So, fastball up. Okay, this is actually what Libertor does. He tries to pound you with that, and then he tries to get in there with the curveball. This is it. <laughs> I could end the video now if I wanted to. That is what Matthew Libertor does. He throws four seamers likely up around the zone. Sometimes it's down here, but he's just generally trying to get the whiff here. And then he's got this beautiful looking curveball that he gets for strikes confidently. And Shazam. That's that's Matthew Libertor. Watch. He tries to do it again. Misses. It's it's his debut again. It's fine. I get it. There's a fastball up. There's a gift. There's a wonderful, wonderful gift. And he's got the fastball down. I froze him at 96. Honestly, I don't know why he froze him at 96. It could have been one of those things where he's throwing a lot of fastballs up. And then uh, if he says, sees it low, he thinks it's going to be the curveball falling out of the zone. But I feel like, yeah, Miller, you should have swung at that one. But hey, 96 froze him. Good stuff. That works. And what a wonderful feeling for your first out to be that, right? And that actually right there, Contreras kind of shows you. That's a really hard fastball to pick up. I mean, that's at 96 right at the top of the zone. It's what you want to see. Contreras also going at it aggressively looking for a fastball, which is actually the typical approach for hitters with young pitchers coming up, right? In their first start in the majors, I understand the Libertor pitch last year actually got really excited by his second half with that increased velocity. Um, but generally, when you are making a big promotion start, then a debut of some kind, Pitchers are going to go more fastball heavy than we'll see later on in the year because you just want to throw strikes. As, as a pitcher, your first start, the worst thing you can do is throw lots of walks. The easiest pitch to get strikes with are generally fastballs. Thus, hitters know this, and they'll be more aggressive, especially early in the count. And that's what Contreras was doing here. But Libertor feasted on that. Throw a really good fastball up. What do you do now? Just threw another one. That's at 97. And that's away. You can see that Contreras now swinging twice. At the fastball at 00 and at 01. This isn't even the most ideal fastball to swing at. I mean, if you want to, you can go to right field with it, but got in the end of the bat. Contreras clearly isn't locked in on that fastball, but he's trying to hit it, right? So you should not be throwing a fastball now. So too. And he throws a way too hittable curveball. That's right in the middle of the zone. I like the approach of it, and because he threw two fastballs, he was able to get a grounder here. But I. Uh, that should be that should be different, right? That should be a better located fat, uh, curveball. I like that. You know, the other times we've seen him against righties, Libertor hasn't been able to go inside. He's, he's been all over here, which is typical, actually. Um, younger pitchers will miss a lot, uh, especially with their fastballs. They will be missing uh, a ton over here. Why is that? Because they're so amped up and adrenaline-wise that their front shoulder will open up too quickly. And thus, the arm isn't catching up fast enough. So that means when release point is, it's, it's over here as opposed to where it needs to be over here. I promise you all of those drawings made sense. Essentially, that means opening up too quickly means that the ball will go up and away arm side. Right? Up and arm side, essentially. Um, and it'll miss stuff over here. So actually, we've seen that mostly for the first couple batters. And I would love to see this. Oh, man. James Paxson, in his peak, was able to hit that so often at 96 miles per hour and to see that that's a really good first pitch for Matthew Libertor hopefully that sticks around now they're going up and away so whatever and that's a 97 I don't know why they're doing that but okay that's much better now this was this was supposed to be I mean it really does look like Matthew Libertor is just trying to hit this all day and that's fine with me I'm cool with that he's doing it at 97 which you want to see um that's that's great and this is actually generally as I mentioned before more hittable than the elevated four seamers because it's going closer down to where the barrel is easy to drop the bat and make uh you know jump out on that and I'm sure Adamus is like oh man that wasn't it 98 it was really 97.6 uh that the heart that's the hardest pitch he throws the entire game so you see that first ending and you see 
Uh, strikeout first batter looking at 96. You see the curveball falling down for uh, an 0-2 pitch that, you know, ground out, whatever. And then 98 away. This is typically not swung at. I mean, this is, of course, if you remember yesterday, I talked about the box of where you're missing. Actually, Mitch Keller's one. Go check that one out. But this is an away heater, and away heaters are not are not strikes ever. So you don't get swings on them. I uh, Adamas, yeah, you were a little bit lost in that one. But don't don't expect an away here like that to get whiffs like this often. Uh, that's 95 down the pipe. Rough, where are you looking at? I mean, I understand you're you're trying to get a sense of a new pitcher, so you take the first pitch, but that's might be the best pitch you see. Oh no, never mind. You got another one. <laughs> Those are, to me are mistakes, and there's the curveball as you imagine at two strikes. Uh, but hey, he's swinging and missing through it, and there that's actually a very hittable one, right? And he does give this a ride, um, and it does get caught. Uh, but just to watch that one more time, so he's trying to miss up here again, right, or get rough to be aggressive on it. And this is, I mean, you can see he's a little bit late. He's pushing it though, right? And this is down, and that's this normally gets hit a decent amount. You say, Nick, that's in that quadrant. You're not wrong, but it is a little higher up and in than you want like down here. Um, and also four seamers are generally more hittable down than they are up. Um, so gave that a good ride. Uh, fortunately for Libertor, found a spot. And look at this. Once again, guys are being aggressive on that first pitch fastball. We haven't seen anything but a first pitch fastball thus far for Libertor, which doesn't surprise me. I mean, this is this bread and butter is a fastball leaning into the curveball. Which is why I want that slider to be a thing. Uh, we'll see some of those. Uh, that's a fastball upstairs, 96. Uh, swing and miss on that. Throw it again. Sure, okay. I don't give him a strike. Now you want it. This would be a perfect slider pitch. It is. Oh, nice. That's what I love. I love that. That is the thing. I feel like if Libertor can execute that, that's like the, the real key to his dominance in the majors. That's such a beautiful pitch. That will be a, a benefit for the pitcher every single time. The only way that this gets beat is if someone fists it out over like the shortstop, a flare between the shortstop and left fielder. And I'll take that chance every time, right? Beautiful. That's a foul ball here. Great. You get to one and two. Now you can throw a curveball underneath it. Yeah, he thought that was a strike. It's not a strike. You missed, though, Libertor. You're supposed to get that down. That's not supposed to be called strike. Fastball matched on that? Yeah, but that, see, that's down in middle, right? And he fights it off, but if that's actually executed up, that's probably strike three. It looks like a changeup, uh, which I don't hate, but considering that Anderson wasn't able to attack that fastball effectively, I feel like you had him beat already in the fastball. Like, if a guy's on the heater, like really on it, in a good location, then you mix it up with a changeup, but... I don't know. I think that was a little too much, especially in a 2-2. Now you're in a 3-2 count, and now you miss them, right? Like, taking a chance at 2-2 on that changeup. Uh, this is the, the the old book on, like, what you throw in a 2-2 count. Well, you throw in 2-2, you throw a 3-2. And it, it, I don't love I don't love the, taking a chance on the changeup there. Taking a chance on the changeup at 0-2-1-2 is good, especially when you haven't thrown yet. You know, that's not, that's not Levator's best pitch, right? So it set him up for a walk, essentially, and unfortunately, he didn't come through with the curveball. I think he threw the curveball at 2-2, two, two, and then he tried again. So you have two. Like, you mess up on the first one, you can make an adjustment. But then he couldn't make an adjustment, and he, and he had the walk. See, he's getting whiffs at the top of the zone out of it against the Brewers on first pitch. This is the third time the Brewers have swung out of their shoes on a fastball upstairs at OO. I wonder if that sticks. I feel like this is the thing the Brewers are doing. They're like, the game plan is that he's going to be doing this pitch. Oh, oh. And they all tried to do it and they all failed. But those are all balls. Right? Those are out of the zone. But they, they swing. See, there it is again. And that gets the out. Right? Taylor was ready for it. Didn't matter. Cool to see that. Ah, uh, It's funny. That curveball is a really good pitch for Libertor. I had a high CSW throughout the start, so he finds it later on. But you can just kind of see, like, what if he doesn't have those always pitches? Like, how much better can it be, you know? Nah. Balls, no strikes. Over short. 
There's a there's a fastball I uh, in the middle of the plate. Let's watch that one more time. 2-0. You got to execute a better fastball than that, right? That's a 2-0 fastball. That should be it every time. So there's a first pitch curveball. I dig that. That's good. He's trying to go up and in. Misses it. But I love the approach of trying to go up and in. There's another curveball. This is a filthy pitch. Especially after that up and in fastball. That even though it was a ball, it still sets this up. Oh, man. If you can do that in two strike counts consistently, that's really good. First time we really saw that. Now you could do a change. Now is when at 1 2, you could try that change up away. You know? It did another curveball. Love that. That's a beautiful one. Right at the bottom of the zone. That's the premier curveball from Libertor that I was talking about. You love to see this. Misses fastball upstairs. What are you doing, Terang? What, what, let's watch this again. He throws a bad fastball up, and then he throws a very similar one. You know, it's a little farther down, but like, this is a 1-0 pitch. You should not be swinging at this pitch. You got a gift, Libertor. Again, misses with it. Like, he's he has some beautiful curveballs, but he's not totally consistent with it yet. That's a good fastball inside at 95. You know, this is a double. You can be like, oh man, he allowed a double. It's 1-0 because he missed with the curveball. This is, if you don't miss with the curveball, maybe he doesn't jump on this. But you didn't really get information in that first curveball, right? He could have been looking fastball or curveball. You don't know, which means that this 1-0 this fastball, what do you know? Miller's looking for a heater. And he gets one that isn't the hardest. It's inside and up. And like this is generally like a good spot. Props to Miller for turning on it properly. You know, that's going to happen. Hey, that's twice now Contreras is aggressive against Libertor. First was the fastball up and now was the curveball down, which is interesting because I think Contreras is correctly guessing what pitch type it is. But because he is, he's swinging out of his shoes instead of saying like, well, it's going to be a ball. Even though I got it right, I shouldn't be, you know. There's a temptation as a hitter being like, I know what pitch is coming, thus I should swing at it because I know how it's going to move. And even if it's out of the, of the zone, I'm still going to be able to make contact with it and do damage against it. But this is the problem, right? You got a whiff on the first at bat doing that, and now you got a foul ball on it. And Contreras, you got to be a little more disciplined there. So at 0-1, he just swung out of his shoes on a curveball out of the zone. You go with a fastball. Oh, no, no. The batter is telling you that he's looking for a curveball. So he's going to spit on that one, right? He's going to be like, no, I know exactly what that one was. You're doing the same thing. No, 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 no. Ha, now you threw one for a strike. Wow, that's that's bold. Um, you would think, this is I, this is what just happened. Uh, at 1-1, Contreras showing Libertor, I'm not swinging at that pitch out of the zone. I'm on the curveball. All of a sudden, Contreras says, okay, great. Like, the whole book says you throw a fastball now. Contreras knows that. He's a catcher. He knows this. So, it's gutsy to throw that 1-1 one, one curveball down the middle after throwing two curveballs already. Surpri it surprised Contreras. Like, this isn't this is a give up of a, of a step down. Nope. He's just like, absolutely not. Good job. That's actually, that's really cool. Now, Contreras has no idea what's coming. So, I throw a fastball upstairs. Nah, another curveball now. Nah. You gotta you gotta give him the heater now. Yeah, he's gonna he doesn't have the timing on it because he's just seen curveballs. You know, so that's why that one works. Come on, execute one pitch and you're out of the inning. That's a really good pitch. It's it, it, do that in 0 and I think you really establish things better. Still 1 0, really good. 0 1, this gets an out. They're swinging at this 0 1. That's a really good pitch. If you can do that with any sort of consistency, things are cool. Nice. He got the curveball for a strike at 2 well. Beautiful. Love that. Love that. Another strike for a curveball. Nice play. Beautiful. Save a run. 
Man, that's a great feeling if you're a Libertor. Like, oh, welcome to the bigs, right? You get stuff like that. It was Look, you got a curveball for a strike at 2-1, right? Generally, 2-0-2-1 are hitter counts. You execute a good curveball. We're good. Now we're going to the fourth. And you can see it's not 94. It's not 95, not 96. It's 94, right? We're seeing a little bit of that velocity drop as it goes on, which is typical. That's fine. That's in there, Rough. That's another at bat. Like, Ruff has just not been able to handle fastballs over the zone. I mean, it gives you so much confidence if you're Libertor. And he tries to go with the slider again, right? This is that slider cutter we saw at 90 before at 01. We, I guess we haven't seen too many 01 counts from Libertor against right? I think we have. But he, for whatever reason, he's experimenting it now, um, second time through the lineup against Ruff. I love the approach. That's a strike blue. I'd say throw it again. No, he throws the cut curveball. That's cool. Ruff doesn't. Ruff can't handle this. Now at one two, maybe you experiment with a changeup. This happens a lot in games where you don't know if you have a pitch, and when you get yourself in favorable counts, yes, you want to get the batter out, but also it's an opportunity for you to see if you have a pitch or not. So at one two, this is a premier situation to say, all right, you know what? Let me see if I have my change up here. Ruff looks like he's beat regardless. So if I miss it, fine. Then I'll throw a curveball and I'll I'll get him out. But right now is where you want to experiment. Do I have that change up? Ah, see, oh, you went with a curveball. You still missed it anyway. Yeah, that's a neat. Uh, that's not bad from Ruff. He stayed slow. Like, if he, if he fouls that off, because that means he has to follow curveball all the way back in. If it's going to land for a strike, he's ready for it, right? Instead of giving up on it because it's away. That tells me that he's a little bit back on his timing. He's, he's keeping his weight back to be able to handle a secondary pitch at 77, which means you've got to attack him with a fastball now. And you did up. He swung at it. He, actually, good job from Ruffer to give it a ride, but hey, worked out. Good. You executed a pitch. You got it out. Let's move on. And you still don't know if you have that changeup. <laughs> He's doing his thing. This is this has been returning swifts, right? But now the, the brewer second time through, like, no, we're not going to do that. Okay. So he comes back down, and oh man, that's a 2-0 pitch. What are you looking for? This is right down Broadway at 2-0, Anderson. What do you what do you what do you want? There's this. I think that's the slider at 90. Uh, this is kind of interesting because where is he set up? He's down the middle. Um, but he's, you know, you want to get this down, you know, inside. And there he gets it. 3-1. Wow. 3-1 throwing that pitch. It's not really his pitch. Glad it worked. Fastball inside 96. This is good. Way to battle. You throw the curveball now. Yep. Beautiful. And that's the thing. I, I do feel like it's a 50-50 if that curveball is going to work for Libertor. Because we've seen a lot of them just float outside. And sometimes he gets on top completely. And uh, he's able to get his arm out properly. And it looks beautiful. I mean, it's a really nice curveball. Um, I'm glad he had the faith in a 3-2. Because, yeah, he knows, like, this is the pitch that's really going to win it for me. Good stuff. Uh, is it gone? Okay. So, so here we are. The the Brewers have been very aggressive with uh, fastballs early in counts. And we've seen maybe like Ruff was very passive. But they've been swinging at those that have been up here. And at 0, 0 to throw a fastball there, not necessarily ideal. That's generally for a lot of guys what they want in an 0, 0 count. Deeper in accounts, they're going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little harder to get that pitch, right? Or to, to turn on it because they have to think about so many other things. But at 0, 0 they can cheat on this. Tyrone did that. Libertori got punished. Oh, they called it a double ultimately. Okay. And uh, there's the first pitch curveball. This is the rule of thumb. If you don't know this, the rule of thumb, the book, you've got a man on second. You've got a big boy up at the plate, and it's an 0-0 count. 
Do you know what the first pitch is going to be? I would say about 85% of the time, it's going to be something like this. So it's a one nothing game and a strike. A breaking ball. It's going to be a breaking ball 85% of the time because batters are going to be more aggressive. The pressure is on them to knock in that guy from second base. And what do batters want to see? They want to see a fastball. So they want to see a fastball. They swing out of their shoes. It's 1-1. One, one. Gets the fastball, Carantini does, and he can't take advantage of it. And it's so frustrating. He's upset. So you would think he's going to swing out of his shoes for another fastball, right? You could throw one up out of the zone, but I honestly, I would probably throw a breaking ball. Surprise him. Oh, he wanted it. He wanted to, but that just wasn't tasty enough to do it. Do it again. Yep. Got him. Because he's that, that fastball he missed is now in his head. He's like, I can't, I can't let that happen again, you know? All right, so this is the last thing we've got here from Libertor. First pitch curveball, start the inning for a strike. Beautiful. Do it again. He can't hit it. Yep. You do a third, now get it down. Don't, don't do the fast one. Don't be cute. Just do another one down. Yep, okay, you got an out. Oh, I almost an out. Now you can probably speed it up. Yeah, what, what was this? What is this? Why, why is the glove here? What are you trying to do? What? <laughs> I know he just swung at a curveball that was here because he thought the curveball was going to come back further. He's like, that's too close. A fastball over there is going to get a fastball over there. Right? Why are you doing that? That's like the easiest take. You just got him from an 0-2 to 1-2. Well, Weimer's like, oh. Woo! All right, I can. I, all right, maybe I've got a little more confidence now. Why would you do that? Makes no sense. Again. Strike. Oh, you got that call? It's not a strike. Uh, I, I still hate it. I still hate it because that's not a strike. I mean, sure, you're saying, Nick, one, two, allow the umpire to knock, you know, to do it. But, uh, I still think that's not it. I think you can, this is not a game anymore where you can bank on the ump giving you those calls. We haven't seen that in Libertory get that call once, you know? Uh, I, I'm not a proponent of that in 1-2. Um, I think it's more, it's, it's a better thing to rely on the batter getting themselves out than hoping the ump gives you that call. And a fastball away is not the pitch that you normally get chases on like that. Weimer didn't chase it, and he normally does chase those things. You know? Ah, uh, you gotta come down on it. Do it again. Oh man, I tried to do the slider. That, that, that's what should be going on against lefties, the sliders. Uh, we haven't really seen many of them. We saw some good ones inside of righties, like a couple. But I really do want that to be an extra weapon for Lee Retour. I feel like that's the extra element, instead of just going curveball, fastball, as we've mostly seen. Cool. Two, I mean, that was a 2-0 pitch away from a guy like Terang who should be pushing that off to left. To see that he wasn't able to handle that means I attack him with more fastballs. Yeah. And then you throw a slider off of this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, this is where the slider comes in. You throw it down and away now. Curveball, I see, it should be the slider. Curveball, but see, it should be the slider. This is exactly where it should... I mean, you're going to throw fastballs. Yeah. Because you don't trust the slider in a 3-2 count. And he's on it. This is... The, the, the nullifier is the slider. And eventually, he got it. All right. But, I mean, I think that I think that showcases pretty easily. Like, Libertor needs that slider. No. Why are you doing this? You got one call. No. <laughs> oh my gosh talk to him three he's gonna walk him this is a lost at bat he's got a ton of room on the right side of the cardinals infield if you talk to him yet <laughs> so 86 pitches oh thank gosh wow he didn't even like throw a strike here 
He threw six straight balls. <laughs> what a gift. Uh, that is Math uh, Matthew Libertor's uh, 2023 debut. Um, my takeaway is that he got a lot of gifts, right? There were, there were a lot of moments where it could have gone worse. He got run saved by some good defense. The near home run was a double. The, the Brewers didn't take advantage of everything that he was given. He didn't have a slider working. He got a gift of a strikeout before and a couple of things along those lines. Um, at the same time, I do think that that fastball does work really well. The Brewers are going to handle it. And the curveball, when it spins in the zone, is really good. Inconsistencies, right? A lot of wasted curveballs. Ones that are just, like, completely uh, gone arm side. The slider still has work to be done. He doesn't believe in it. The changeup doesn't believe in it. So, as of right now, I mean, a lot of these things could be blamed on the 2023 MLB debut. Um, we see that a lot in MLB debuts. We see nervousness and we see mechanics not being trusted and adrenaline getting in the way of muscle memory and everything like that. It's very typical. I don't know how much of that was being applied here or not. When Libertor executed what he wanted to do, it's really good. Like, it's, you know, I could say that about a lot of guys, but that this does speak to a higher ability than a lot of guys we do see considering it is 95 elevated upstairs from a lefty goes inside and out we see a curveball that is really tough to hit inside the zone and also has some beautiful ones underneath it and when that slider slash cut or whatever you want to call it works it's good it, it that is a very important nullifier to that fastball i am a little worried in the short term because he did get gifts here from the from the brewers he's going to cincinnati next on the road I'm very curious to see how that one plays out. I think he's going to walk more batters. I think he's going to uh, get hit a little bit harder there. But maybe not. Maybe his execution improves once he's got this start out of the way. And I'm just very excited to watch Matthew Libertor moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this one. This was a good time. Um, but that is it. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can't miss any of these moving forward. These are these are the best time. So that is it. So my name is Nick Pollock. And may your babas be low. And your strike outside.